Cheers. Cheers. So tonight, as you can tell, we will be talking wine, in particular, probably California wine. Yeah. A little bit of Missouri. And we just want to say that if you don't catch us live, please still ask questions, still, still, uh, comment comment because we will we watch this thing for two or three days afterwards so if you comment it notifies us and we love your questions we do especially about this so tonight we're going to do something that we've um never done with you guys before we're going to take you on a drinking adventure we're going to bring you guys along for our wine experience um we have tried wine in Missouri, Michigan, Arizona, California, and Nevada. And it is different all across the United States. It is different in different regions of the states. So we just wanted to share with you a little bit of information that we have learned. I know the holidays are coming up. Sometimes that means um, we, are <laughs> we drink a little bit more around family time. Um, some people want to know what to pair with certain dishes, things like that. So we are just going to throw some wine bombs your way. You guys take them in. <laughs> I don't know who gave us all the likes right there, but thank you. We just had like 100 likes. I guess anytime we talk about alcohol, we get hearts, we get likes. <laughs> people like alcohol. Okay. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so thank you guys for joining us. If you are currently not drinking, feel free to grab whatever you want to drink. Um, if you're watching this after we're live and it's during the day, you might want to wait until later, but save it, watch it at home, and drink with us. So, like I said, something we've never done before, but we're doing it with you guys. We're taking you along on our yes. journey. We, uh, we thought about doing a drink of choice Wednesday, but we figured we would just go ahead and talk about only wine tonight. Right. Only wine. Comment below yeah. if you do want us to do a drink of choice. We have a couple things that we like. Um, different times of year, beach vacations, things like that. So comment down below if you want us to do that in the future. But for right now, we're just going to stick to wine. I'm going to quit talking because I have not taken a drink of this yet. This is a Cab Sav. It's a 2012 from Zaca Mesa, which is a winery in California. And I am not paid to say this. This is completely unsponsored. This is just one of the wineries that we just came back from. So, I guess... I wish we were sponsored. Yeah, that'd be that'd great. Be, that'd be awesome. To be sponsored by a Yeah, winery. this is from Santa Barbara. Um, a winery close... Right outside of Santa Barbara. About 30, 30 minutes. Um, this is good. It's very good. Yeah, it's pretty We can't good. be on here too long either because our teeth will start turning purple, which is kind of crazy. So, we're going to try Dr to make this... Drink of choice. Okay. Sure you, you talked us into it, Amber. Yeah, we'll, we'll do, do a drink, drink of choice sometime. So... Before we get started, too... The reason that we're sitting in here, um, we have our wine table behind us. So this lists all the different kinds of grapes and kind of their acidity, their strength, what characteristics they have, if they're fruity, if they taste more like blackberries or strawberries or they're tannic or things like that. So um, we have this framed. It's a nice reference point for us. If we're getting ready to start, a, open a new bottle of wine that we have never had before. Um, if it's a blend that we've never heard of, we can just reference this. You can find it online, so it's an easy referencing point. So we wanted to sit in here because not it's that, really cool. <laughs> I mean, not that any of you really care. Like, um, you guys are probably like, oh my gosh, they have a wine. They have a chart of berries that are made to make wine. Like grapes, yeah. Grapes, yeah. yeah. Berries, great. <laughs> um, okay, not the same. Not the same thing. It's been a long day. But, uh, I don't know. We've taken a lot of wine tours. Um, and every time we take a wine tour, we have a guide. And the guide tells us something different. One guide showed us this, and we're like, that's really cool. Yeah. Like, that'd be cool to have just because it shows you which grapes are basically like, like me, for example, I like all big boys. And big boys are at the very bottom dark red as you go up it goes into your lighter what i call lighter wines i don't know what the i'm, I'm not a wine expert so they change in strength obviously um 
the darker ones are down at the bottom, which means they're typically stronger. And as it goes up, they change, they become lighter, and they turn into whites. And so you can tell an easy way. We like to reference this, like I said, if we don't know what we're, like if it's a blend and it's got a couple different grapes that we've never heard of, we can reference this and see, like, this may not be one that we would like, um, or it may be one that, that we do like. To answer your question, my leggings, I did see a leggings question. I'm surprised that you guys can see that. Um... <laughs> No, they, I, they're not, my mom actually got these for me a few years ago, so I have no idea where they're from. Yeah. You'll have to, um, somebody can tag Elaine Brinkley if she's not in here, bring her along. She, she's my, my famous shopper, so tag right. Elaine Brinkley and Let's she can started. do her thing. And I was going to say, if any of you have asked questions and we've got the, we've got the camera in a different position tonight, so it's hard for us to see all of the comments. I'm just going to be honest. So if we miss your question... We apologize. We will get back to it after the live feed. Absolutely. So, here we go. Go ahead, Courtney. Okay, so I am going to start with just kind of an overall, general, what I have learned about Missouri wines. Um, being from Missouri, I'm a proud Show Me Stater, and I love, I love this place. It's got all different kinds of weather. So, that actually affects the crops that we grow i.e. grapes. So if you've ever been to any winery in Missouri, you notice that the wine is usually a little bit sweeter. Um, and majority of people that are from around here like sweeter wine. So that's just what we're accustomed to. That's what we like. So how this all got started, the whole winery thing is we actually went to Herman on a wine tour. So we went and tried all of these different wines Majority of the wines that you're going to taste are going to be sweeter, and a lot of them are going to be a white wine. So I'm just going to touch on a few white wines that you may come across, some that I like or dislike, um, and I will let you... And she's talking only Missouri right now. Yeah. So, and just so you all know, the reason the wine is so sweet is because it gets so hot in the state of Missouri. So when it gets hot, the fermentation... Of the grape, yeah. Basically causes it to so, be the, the sugar buildup. Basically, yeah. Right? So when a grape is like when there's extreme weather, it it causes like character is what that that'll be a good term to use. Character it forces the grape to protect itself, or it's really hot, so it has to get nutrients from other places, things like that. We're getting very scientific, and that's not the point of this. The point being. The grape is not probably ideal in Missouri because of the extreme climate. So a lot of winemakers... What unless they you will, like sweet wine. Unless you like really sweet wine. Um, a lot of the wine in Missouri is a little bit sweeter, like I said, and it's got a higher alcohol content. Um, and a lot of times winemakers will make their wine a little bit sweeter to kind of mask that high alcohol t content. That's completely up to you guys if you like that. Another <laughs> note, there is no like right or wrong wine... Um, Everyone has different palettes. Everyone likes different things. So I like something a little bit different than what he likes. He can taste different things in wine than I can. I'm just giving you an overall characteristic. If you were to pick a Missouri wine, more than likely you're going to pick like a Riesling, a Moscato, and that's going to be something that you're used to, something that you like, a Vignette. Um, and those are all perfectly fine. Just keep in mind those are a little bit sweeter. So yeah kind of an overview like, of Missouri wine. Well, like, for example, the Missouri wine, the Missouri big boy red wine is a Norton. Like, the Missouri Norton. That's what it's known for. Missouri Norton. Which is right here. So it is the third level up. I'll just... I, I'm going to go ahead and just say that when I drink a Norton, it tastes like grapefruit juice to me, okay? <laughs> so it's a good wine. It's just a little sweet for me, whereas, like, a cab from Northern California is, like... A lot of people don't like them because when you drink it, it kind of kicks back, quite frankly. It's it's just a punch it's, in the mouth almost. Okay, so cabs are down... Uh, where's a cab? It should be down at the bottom. Okay, cab is right here. So cab is a very big wine. Um, that's what we're drinking right now. Cabs, notoriously, Napa has some of the best cabs. Um, Northern California is kind of known for that. So when you are trying to go to find a, a wine and you don't know where to start. Um, my suggestion, if you like a cab, is a Napa area, Northern California cab. So that's my that's my kind of cool. recommendation. All also, right. 
I think we're gonna. I keep getting off topic, so I, know. I apologize. I'm yeah. like. <laughs> I went. He brought up Norton. Um, I wanted to give a recommendation too because I get this question a lot. What do you like? Where do you find it? If you're looking to find like a Missouri wine, Stonehill makes a great Norton and a Chamborson. Those are both red wines. They are great. Uh, they're very affordable. You can find them here locally. So just wanted to throw that plug. If you're not, I mean, sometimes you go and there's a wide <laughs> selection and you don't know where to start. If you want to try a pretty decent red that's made here in the state, a Norton and a Shimborson from Stonehill are, are very good. Okay, sorry. No, I have fine. like so many notes of so many things that I want to tell you guys. I want yeah. to drink with you. Thank, so Thank you guys for all the like all of the interaction I'm reading, all the comments, it's funny. Um, if you guys think we deserve a like, give us a like. If you think we deserve a share, give us a share. If you think any of your friends would like what we're talking about, tag them in yeah. this in this live feed. Absolutely. Okay, so we've kind of touched on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is coming up. So if it's okay, I'm going to kind of go into food pairings. Um, and turkey. So I actually did a little bit of research. Pairing food with wine kind of changes the taste of wine a little bit. So I looked up kind of what are the best ones. I do this a lot like when we're getting ready to eat. What what should I pair it with? Um, there's tons of wine apps out there and you can get all into this. But for turkey, um, kind of basic ones are Zinfandel, which is a red, not a, not a white. Um, it's a true, if it's a true Zinfandel, it's going to be red. A Pinot Noir, which is a lighter red, um, and then a Chardonnay, which is a white. So those are the three that they said to pair with turkey, which makes perfect sense. Usually it says if it grows together, it goes together. So like your things that are um, a little bit lighter fare are usually found kind of on like the coasts, um, like your white wines and things like that that grow better um, around water and things like that. But I don't know if there's a whole lot of truth to that because everything seems to grow kind of all over the place anymore. But Zinfandel, Chardonnay, and Pinot Noir. So those were the three. Um, since we're talking about Chardonnay, I will bring up just a little point about Chardonnay. It's a great white wine. Characteristically, though, um, it's going to be a little bit drier. So if you're a female or male and you like sweeter white wine, I get ladies asking me all the time for a sweeter white wine. Chardonnay is probably not your pick. I will just say that because it's a little bit drier. Sometimes it's a little bit oaky. Um, sometimes it's a little bit buttery. So not necessarily my pick for a sweet white. It is actually my favorite white. Um, and I prefer mine in like a neutral oak or stainless steel because I don't like the, an oaky Chardonnay. That's just my personal opinion. Those are just my buds. That's just how I feel. So I feel like I'm just talking and talking and talking and I've clearly had some wine, so. You haven't had very much. <laughs> you keep talking. I'm the one. <laughs> I, I know. By the end of this, we'll have purple teeth and <laughs> we'll be really chatty. So Susie, you asked a great question. What's our favorite Missouri wine? Um, I, I would think a Norton or a Shimborson probably. Yeah, um, Stonehill. We, I'm a red. I'm a red wine drinker. Honestly, I don't have ton, but yeah, Stonehill probably. Stonehill. Um, in Herman, they actually, how this whole, if you guys um, follow us on any kind of social media, you know that we just got back from California. We actually went to 19 wineries while we were there. Um, yeah, mind blowing. If you've ever gone to that many wineries, comment down below. Tell me what you liked. Um, if you were in California, please comment too. I always like to know because there's a lot. But how this all kind of came about, we were in Herman, and there's actually um, a winery that's based out of Santa Barbara, but they distribute at Hermanoff, and it's called, like, Deerberg Star Lane Wineries, and they have fantastic reds. Like, they're great. Obviously, it's a California grape, so they're a little bit more known for red than we are, but it costs a pretty penny. I mean, you're going to pay, like, 40 to 60 bucks a bottle, which... It's crazy. That's too much for us. Like, that's not what we, that's not our sweet spot. <laughs> that's, that's definitely a special occasion. And I don't even know what special occasion that would be. So that's just no. favorite Missouri wine. There Amber, you anytime you guys want to go on a double date to a winery, call us. Yes, absolutely. Jared, I don't know what wine goes with helicopters, but I bet you could fly me to some pretty sweet wineries. So anytime you want to come pick me up in Pleasant Hill, my man, 
I'm down, okay? Love it. Okay, so I want to touch a little bit on, since we're drinking cab, and I know we've talked about cab a little bit, if you guys have ever tried a cab or a red wine that maybe, growing up it was called like bite you behind the ears, like get you behind the ears. If you've ever had that, like, that is actually supposed to be in there. Those are tannins. So if you don't like that, like he really likes heavily tannic wine, like really big dry wine. I don't particularly care for that as much. Cabs are known for that a little bit more. If you don't like that, look on the back of the bottle and see. It should tell you like what notes are prominent in the wine. So if it says heavily tannic or heavy tannins, maybe skip that one. That's just kind of an overall basic. If you don't like that dry kind of taste like in the back of your throat, avoid tannins. That's my that's my deal. All right, what else do you have to say? I'm just like jabbering. You, I mean, do you all do you all have any questions? I mean, I don't know what questions you're gonna have. <laughs> any questions at all? I don't know. What are some of your favorite wineries? I just saw um, Cindy post one in Napa. I saw Susie say the Vanderbilt Mansion. Um, anyone else have any uh, any recommendations? Any Sangioveses? We just had an incredible Sangiovese. Um, Floor de Lee. Yeah, right? Floor de Lee. So, and I will, before it's all said and done, I will tell you all of our favorite wineries um, that you have to ship them, obviously, because they're not in Missouri. But Sangioveses um, are great with Italian food. So they're great with like tomatoes and things like that. But yeah, I mean, Cindy, we just, the Floor de Lee place that we uh, we just went to in Fair Play, California, right? Yes. Um, it was, it's probably our one of our favorite wineries vineyards we've ever been to the wine was amazing and it's all aged so the average bottle of wine that we were drinking um was around the, the year 2008 to 2009 the winemaker said it's a french style mm -hmm. um but it's one of our favorites uh why do you shake the wine <laughs> that's okay. a that's a great question so um Adam, that's a, a great point. Have you ever gone, and you guys need to comment down below, if you have, to try wine, gone to a wine tasting, and you've looked over, you have to do it, because okay. we just watched the movie so like, Sideways. It, like, so in the movie Sideways, if if you've never watched it, watch it. It's a good movie. But if you ever go to a winery and you see people like, mmm, and you'll even... They get like, like all they into get it. They get all in it. I, <laughs> I'm not all crazy like that. Like, I like to smell it. I mean, there's different flavors but the reason you do that adam is because it opens it up it yeah. allows the flavors to come out and so you can smell it it tastes better um so some I, wine has to breathe sometimes um you can like we have an air like a wine aerator so we pour it through that to kind of let it breathe a little bit before we drink it um so shaking it kind of just like you said, it opens it up a little bit and it, it lets it breathe just a little bit. Sometimes wine, I don't know if you've ever tr had this happen to you, you'll pour it in the glass and you'll take a swig and you're like, oh gosh, that is like rough and choppy. And then 10 or 15 minutes later, you try it again and it's better because it's sat for a little bit and it's got some oxygen into it. So kind of opening it up, letting it breathe a little bit. So, so I'm going to say my three favorite types of wine. Not, ooh. not even necessarily from wineries, just the actual type. Ooh, ooh, so, I love it. Okay. Well, I feel like we're gonna, I feel like we're gonna lose some people if, if we're like the science behind wine. We, we uh, like, <laughs> you drink wine because you like it. Yeah. It tastes good. It's affordable. It tastes good with food. That's the main thing. You go to wineries. So, if there's people that are like acting all crazy with the wine tasting, it's, it's okay. If, so if so I that, like though, I funny. like cab sobs, which I know you guys can't see that. That's what we're drinking. Cab sobs. I like probably my next favorite would probably be a Mouvedre, which is okay, very, yeah. very big wine. And then a Grenache, probably. So Grenache is another big one. Those are probably my three favorite types, if any of you cared. So if you're going to buy me a bottle of wine. Also... Any red blend, 
Absolutely. Send my way. I love me some red blends. So a blend, obviously, is a mix of different kinds of grapes. And he, if it's a blend, more than likely, he is about it. It doesn't even matter. Usually they do like a Grenache, a Syrah, a Mavedra blend. And this guy's all about that life. What's so, your favorite, Courtney? Okay, so my three favorites. Did you like some whites? Right? I do like whites. I'm a, I'm a red I guy like only whites. for the most part. So, um... A Chardonnay for me, um, if I can get a good Chardonnay and it's not too dry and it's not too oaky, I like Chardonnays a lot. Zaca Mesa, we actually just, that I, when we were in California, I was on a hunt. I wanted a good Chardonnay. Zaca Mesa, it was great. It was just outside of Santa Barbara and Los Olivos. I loved it. Um, ooh, what else? Let's see. A Rosé is a really good crisp it's more of like a pink obviously rosé um it's a pink color it's a it's a good summer wine i really enjoy that i don't know if that's necessarily one of my favorites but it's a good one if you're just like getting into wine or if it's hot and it tastes delicious i like a cab a lot um you like ooh, zen i like zen, oh yes zinfandales um it's red it's it, it, California does a great job with the Zins. Yeah, Zinfandels are, are really nice. As I've gotten older, my my taste buds have kind of changed too. When I was younger, um, you know, box wine was where it was at. I, I'm sure all of you have experienced box wine of some sort. Um, if you have, yeah, you understand what I'm talking about. So as I've gotten older, it's changed a little bit. So those are probably my faves. Yeah, and Alicia, I would agree with you 100%. It's definitely hard to say what type of wine because you're right. The different locations make it taste different. Like You can even go, like in California, you can go a difference of like 10 miles. And the gra they can even have grapes that are uh, separate acres and they taste completely different based on like the soil. Um, one side may have had more water drain off. It's like, it's complete, it's farming is what it is. So it just completely changes. So yeah, that's a great point. Like generally you have what you like, but every Barbera, yep. Years change. That's a good one, Matt. Yeah. Barbera. We went through a big Barbera phase. <laughs> Tempranillos are also a good wine. It's a Spanish wine. It's kind of spicy. Those are, those are very good. So <laughs> All right, what else? Cindy, how about you have us over and, and we can bring you some wine for that cellar if we don't drink it all. How about that? If anyone also wants to have a wine tasting party and invite us, we would gladly join you. You just let us know where. We will be there. We will let you drink all the wine you want as long as we get to partake too. So, Box wine is the best. Haley, I don't know if box wine is yeah. the best, but we've all, we've, we've all, all had there. some box wine. Yeah. Most importantly, don't get lost in, like, how the grapes are made and all the fancy schmancy stuff. If you like it and it tastes good to you, by all means, drink it. That's all that really matters. Yep. No matter the price, it doesn't matter. We, I mean, I've drank bottles of wine that cost $50, $60, and I've drank bottles of wine that cost $20 that are amazing. So... Um, it really doesn't matter. Like, no, as long as you like it, that's the most important thing. There's what two other wineries around here? Fifty Highway. Yep, that would be a good idea, Amber. Another class reunion at another winery. I'd be down for that. You have anything else? Um, I was gonna throw out some of our favorite wineries that we have been to. Favorite wineries, here we go. In the states that we've tried. This is our new thing now. Every time we go on vacation, we try wine. So um, we've been kind of all over and we've seen different. Yeah, we were, we were trying it. We were talking. I think over the last two years, we've been to around 40 wineries. So um, it's been fun. We've, we've tried a lot of wine. I will tell you, once you get, like, I would do, say do three or four um, max for a day. Because once you get past that point, they all start to taste the same. And then you get a little goofy and it's like, ugh. So. Adam, that's a great question. Um, what are your amazing $20 wines? The, uh, some of the, if you can find small wineries, um, now granted, these are in California that I've found. 
so you're gonna have to pay for shipping costs. But the wine, the vineyard that we found, Fleur de Lis, it's one of my favorites. It's the French style older wine. Their average bottle of wine costs somewhere between twenty three and twenty eight dollars. Yeah. Um, it's real. It's it is phenomenal wine. It really is. Now, some people might it just hit well with our taste buds. I'm not saying that it's gonna hit well with everyone's taste buds, but it's the taste of that wine is different than any wine I have ever tasted. So I don't know if it's because of the age, because of how long it sit in the barrels, but it, it's good. So, um, if you are into wine too, I would recommend downloading the Vivino app and I will put the app in the comments section, um, in here so you guys can have it. And you can actually scan the barcodes of different wines and it will actually show you reviews on that. So if you're in the grocery store and you don't know what to pick, it's called Vivino and it shows you what other people have said. I will tell you, notoriously, like mentioned earlier, Napa is known for cab salves. So if you want a cab and you want to go that route, um, look on the back. It'll tell you where it's from. Napa Valley is notorious for that. Pinot Noirs, if you look around like the Washington Valley area, so like Oregon, Washington, that kind of area is, is known for Pinot Noirs. The Santa Barbara, like the Santa Ynez, Los Olivos, they have also great wines. You really can't go wrong with that. Um, yeah. But the app is super helpful. Cupcake is a great brand. I don't know if anyone has mentioned that, that I really like. It's very affordable. <laughs> um, Stone Hill is also really good. Alicia, I was hoping no one caught that. So, so Did I, you? Is your glass <laughs> empty? It is. Oh, shoot. The wine's not in here, and I'm not going to get up and go refill. You got some of mine? No, it's okay. No. We're, no. Al we're almost done. We are almost done. <laughs> so, Alicia, good catch. <laughs> if you want us to have another um, wine... Wednesday, we can definitely do that. Just request it down below, and we will um, bring you guys back. And we'll All right, some more. favorite wineries. Okay, so favorite wineries. Florida Lee is probably our favorite. We just discovered these. They are in um, Fair Play, California, Northern California. They are great. They're very affordable. Obviously, you have to pay for shipping. It's more affordable to buy it by the case just to get 12 bottles at once. If you ever have wine shipped, you have to let it sit for two weeks. At least. There is a movie that was went all in depth to this called bottle shock but just trust me on this let it sit for two weeks if not it tastes like crap when you first open it and you've wasted your money so florida lee fair play california zaka mesa which is outside of santa barbara rhoda which is also outside of santa barbara um in arizona we liked pillsbury i thought rhoda was in paso robles uh was it Oh, mm -hmm. you're right. Okay. Paso Robles. Sorry. Rhoda was in Paso Robles, which is um, north of Santa Barbara. Pillsbury in Arizona. Deerberg and Star Lane, which you can get in Herman, but they are actually out of Santa Barbara. So those are probably my favorites. That We I... also, we had some good, our very first time to um, Lake oh, Tahoe. Oh, Jodar. We went. And Crystal yes. Basin. So, and that was in... What? That was in Placerville. Yep, Placerville, which is about 20 minutes north east of, no, I guess it'd be northwest of Fair Play. But it's amazing just that 20 minute difference, how different the wine tastes. But Crystal Basin and Jodar and Placerville were very good. They were very good wineries. They had great Barberas, um, good blends. So it, they were good. They were good. I would encourage you guys to do this too. When Michael and I first. When I told him that we were going to do a wine tour in California... I was bummed. Yeah, he was literally like... Because <laughs> literally, the Go only ahead. wine I had ever, ever tried was... It was a sweet... I'm not... I'm just not a sweet wine drinker. And that's the only wine I'd ever tried. I didn't think I liked wine at all. She's like, hey, babe, we're going to go on a, on a wine tour. Yeah, let's go. Do they have any beer? Okay, that was my first question I get. I asked, Literally. like, will they have beer? Do they beer? have beer? Um, and she said yes, even though I don't think they did. But that's okay. She was tricking me. Either way, I forced myself into trying wine, and since that date, I've I fell in love with it. Like, I love wine. We, I don't know. Every Saturday, we. I'm not every Saturday, but a lot of Saturdays, we'll just sit down. And talk, have a conversation with a bottle of wine, 
um, ketchup. We've, so- we've solved a lot of world problems with wine. <laughs> yeah, wine, wine just, it's good, like, I don't know. But, but the point being, he would have never done this. Go outside your comfort zone. If he wouldn't have gone to a wine tasting. So try him, at least decide for yourself if you don't like it. If you don't like it, it's totally fine. And when you're there, try things that you might not normally get. If you're normally somebody who tries like a sweet white, try a dry red and see yep. if you like their dry red. Well, and I think your taste buds always change. Yeah. So the more wine I drink, the more my taste buds have acquired, I think, the taste of wine and the different tastes that come with wine. So two years ago, I did not like Zinfandel's at all. I thought I thought it was one of the worst reds I'd ever tried okay fast forward two years we go to a similar spot i try a zen and i'm like holy smokes that's one of the best wines i've ever tried um now that could be the different in years of the grapes who knows but just try i mean force force yourself to try new things force yourself to try wines because you never know the the different years the different climates they make the taste of the wine different so just because it may taste bad one year, it may taste wonderful the next. Is that it? I think so. Your glass is empty, so I think it's about time to wrap We it just up. talk for what I feel like a long time. Yeah, we don't have a clock in here, so, so we don't know what time it is. Thank you guys for watching tonight. We got a ton of likes. We got a couple shares tonight. That was awesome. So uh, the two or three of you that shared this, thank you so much for sharing. Um, we appreciate it very much. Uh, again, if you have any questions, comments, please, please comment because um, we'll continue. This shows up on our feed. We'll continue to answer questions, communicate back with you. Tag your drinking buddy down below so they can see this so you guys can party together. <laughs> yes, Adam. Yes, <laughs> it's a, it's, it is. Yes. It's a great table behind us. Yeah. Yes. Also, make sure you subscribe to us, too, because next week is Thanksgiving, so it may not, we may not necessarily do our normal Wednesday routine, so subscribe so you know when we're going live next week with the holiday. Yeah, so. I didn't even know you could do that, um, <laughs> and I was watching somebody live the other day, and it, I just clicked, and it was like, subscribe. I told so, him I subscribed to him. If so. you subscribe, <laughs> you're notified every time we come on live, so we're not going to bother you guys. We only do Weaver Wednesday and Sunday Smarts. So subscribe, check us out. You don't want to miss what we're talking about. So thank you guys. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of the week. And don't forget, Sunday Smart, 7 o'clock with yours truly. Have a good week, guys. Bye, guys.